Hi, welcome everyone. My name is Angat, and today we will be starting a logic app session around building intelligent solutions, specifically looking at automating predictive maintenance with real time IoT data and how logic apps can really help us orchestrate and set up the entire process from an end to end standpoint. Um, before we jump right into it, a quick introduction to myself. My name is Angat. I work at Longview. I'm the VP and Chief Architect for our data, AI, and business applications practice. I'm not going to read everything on the screen. The biggest thing to take away is I'm an overall data nerd. Um, so I've been doing logic apps and been in this data and predictive space for quite some time now. So I'm really excited to walk through um, the session today. Um, one of the reasons why I've decided to move in this is when we really think about where we're competing as an organization and as individuals, we're really looking at, for today specifically, the manufacturing side. Right? The reason we're really looking at manufacturing, if you think about the overall market, we're looking at a $3.8 trillion market. So to be able to capture a portion of that market using some of these predictive uh, models, as well as layering in first party applications like Logic Apps can really help us orchestrate and deliver robust solutions for our organizations and for our customers. And when we think about what, what I'm gonna to present today, we really are gonna go through the predictive service hub. What that really is, it's what we're calling a predictive service hub is an amalgamation of different Azure technologies, right? So we're gonna look at Logic Apps, we're gonna look at an IoT hub, we're gonna look at an event hub, we're gonna look at some form of cognitive services to help with the prediction side, we're gonna look at some reporting. So the whole idea being it's a suite of Azure products that allows us to create this predictive service hub that we can then execute against. Um, so what is predictive maintenance? I think we've all heard about the around proactive maintenance. I mean, if you've ever had a car or taken your car in, you know the reason you're taking it to maintenance is to be proactive. Sometimes it really doesn't need it, but the lights are on, so you really want to make sure that you're going in and updating that. When we think about it from a manufacturing standpoint, one of the main reasons for having proactive maintenance is to reduce downtime. But if the machine isn't ready to be reduced down and isn't ready, really ready for maintenance, you are just creating additional downtime for no real reason. So what's causing that that really impacts your overall execution strategy at the floor level from a maintenance standpoint, and it also increases your overall costs at the end of the day. So one of the benefits about predictive maintenance is that because organizations have spent so much time in proactive maintenance, and we know the history of how machines deteriorate over time, we can really use that data to effectively communicate with the end user or the end consumer, when is the best time for the maintenance of this specific machine. So when we think about what a definition of predictive, uh, predictive maintenance is, it's really that. It's using data and analytics to predict the most likely outcome of a failure and making sure that we approach that right before the failure is about to happen. So the way that we're going to use that is we're going to use advanced algorithms, predictive maintenance. We'll be using some machine learning data. We'll be using cognitive services. This information is really going to come from sensors. So in this case, it's going to be IoT devices, whether those devices provide temperature reading, sound reading, any other engage in uh, reading that we require to detect the anomalies and then try to predict when a failure is about to occur. So one of the some of the core benefits that I mentioned earlier, it really does reduce downtime. We do live in a 24 by 7 world now. So if we can really work to reduce downtime on it on one of these uh, large complex machines, then it really would one improve the overall organization's profitability as well as allow them to have inventory at the right location at the right time and lowers maintenance costs. Because now you're not going in and fixed intervals every single time, going in and maintaining it, even if the equipment isn't ready for maintenance. So really reducing that overall cost. The other thing is you now have more predictability on when it's going to be maintained. So you have a better understanding of when to schedule your maintenance as well. So better predictability allows you to lower that maintenance cost. It improves equipment reliability because now you're actually monitoring it with appropriate information rather than going with gut. It's most likely going to extend the equipment life. Uh, in certain cases, it doesn't because the you're you're noticing that the equipment deteriorates faster, so it allows you to even provide additional quality assurances on the product. And overall, improves safety. We're making sure that we're not pushing the machine until the point of accident or failure. And oftentimes, pushing it to the point of failure causes more um, deterioration and accidents to occur than if we would have just stepped in and done a proactive maintenance rather than predictive. So logic apps. We all really know what logic apps are, but my quick and dirty, simple implement or our definition of it is it is one of the best workflow orchestration tools that exists out there with a plethora of different connectors that allows you to really build complex implementation and integration solutions with intelligence. Um, so when we think about like how 
to use logic apps in a predictive model, what we're really going to do is we're going to use logic apps to orchestrate our overall workflow. So as data is coming in from the sensors and lands in the IoT or event hub, that's where logic apps is listening. It grabs the information, pushes it down the appropriate workflow, depending on certain criteria as we're going to read through that message, right? Is it what type of device is it? What type of sensor information is it? Is it a valid device? Is the device even being registered? Is it is it junk data? Is it valid data? So on and so forth. So really starting to build our orchestration model on top of that. So when we start building that orchestration model, one of the things we're going to run into real quickly is that we need to write some code. We need to be able to understand what these events are. We need to be able to define these events. We need to provide some structure and the data on top of that. And that's really where we end up using Azure Functions. Really like to work in the microservices um, uh, ecosystem. So allowing us to build these microservice eco uh, functions then allows other aspects of the business also touch in on that. So if someone is validating or testing a new IoT device, but don't want to push it all the way through the Azure event hub that exists, they can invoke that function right away, see what how that works um, within that ecosystem just in parallel. Um, again, we are using predictive maintenance, so we are going to be using a machine learning model. The model is really all around um, finding anomalies in the data sets and also looking at historical deterioration as well as overall runtime for the machine. So when we build most of these solutions, we really like to think of it um, in a, with some guiding principles. The reason for these guiding principles is that it allows me to ground myself in the decisions I'm going to make as I design the solution and design the architecture. You know, some of these are fairly simple, which is we want to be cloud first, we want to be scalable, we want to be agile. But ones that are really important to me is to start small and iterate quick, right? So where I've fallen apart is really trying to overcomplicate the solution or trying to build out the exact solution beforehand. Whereas I now I start with really nimble aspects of it. Like step one would be, can I connect to the event hub? Great. Can I connect event hub to logic apps? Awesome. Now we can start adding some more complexity, some more intelligence, some more insight because it allows the QA process to also be a lot easier. So why did why did we come up with this? So the, the challenges that we're faced is manufacturing companies often face rel related maintenance production on our maintenance issues on their production equipment, right? Unexpected breakdown, high equipment costs, things that we've already covered. So solution we implemented was logic apps in this case. Um, they were already cloud first with Azure. Um, the data was already being um, sent over to an event hub, but nothing was happening post that. So we came in and we came in and built out the overall workflow, the orchestration model, as well as an end state report that allowed end users to actually really communicate with the data to understand what it actually meant. You know, that really allowed us to improve the overall uptime and reduce cost by over 30%, which was a great feature for that. Let's provide a little bit of insight into the overall architecture that we used, really simplified architecture. You know, we've got some IoT devices, there's a device simulator that we use, it lands into the IoT hub, and all of the lines and everything else are orchestrated all by logic apps. So <clears throat> once there's, we have some rules on top of the stream analytics, we've now replaced that. So this is a little bit old in that case. Um, we then it goes directly into a service bus, and from there it can take the logic app route. Um, it runs through a field service module that we've implemented. It goes and validates devices, um, and you can see a lot of the information that's taking place in there. So really, a lot of where the insight and intelligence is coming in is around our threshold and rules, and then um, around where we need to orchestrate and send that information. Um, Again, the overview of another other case study is around production equipment that have been facing maintenance challenges. So the issue was that every time they did maintenance, they found that they had to come back and redo maintenance because they weren't doing it at, at the right time, no matter how proactive that they tried to be, no matter how many times they tried to readjust the schedule, it just wasn't making sense. So when we came in and we built this model out, one of the things that we noticed was that they were actually fixing the wrong part of the machine. Um, and that's why it continued to break down until they eventually made it to the right one. So just having the data and being able to analyze that data alone provided a lot of insight before even getting into any of the AI or machine learning or intelligence aspects of it. Um, you know, um, how are we really implementing the solution, right? There's there's three main layers to this, whereas the data integration layer, we in, ingestion layer, pardon me, we need to go and grab the data from somewhere, wherever that exists, whether that's landing in an event hub, whether that's landing in some other location, we want to go grab that. And then we want to provide some form of model training. So in this case, we use cognitive service machine learning within Azure, and we built an anomaly detection model. And that really was looking for anomalies in data sets, whether that be failure alerts or something else. And then that's where the alerting rules come in, right? So once uh, the model predicts something, whatever that prediction is, how do we want to deal with that prediction? Do we want it to go ahead and create a 
a service ticket so that someone can go ahead and schedule a maintenance? Does it want to alert someone so they can review the data before they create a service ticket? So it gives the end, end consumer a lot of options in terms of where they want to use this information, how they intend to use this information. And really the conclusion of all of this is that what we're trying to do is we're trying to build pragmatic solutions that are going to drive value today. AI has become such a buzzword around everything. But what I wanted to do was showcase how, you know, without even thinking about going into the conversational space about AI, thinking about how an overall really well-defined workflow, an orchestration workflow using a technology like logic apps and ingesting data from IoT devices, adding other components like Azure functions, adding intelligence like cognitive services can provide a really, really robust solution. And for me, this 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 is really a funny cartoon because it really allows us to become that manager of business results, right? We've all heard everyone talking about how great things can be or what machine learning can do, what AI can do. This is a really practical, implementation where you may not be in let's say a manufacturing ecosystem but you're going to have certain devices and the device could be anything realistically it could be your social media feeds it could be um, the number of people walking through your store your location it could be video feeds whatever that happens you can really adjust this solution to extend and and provide value to whichever aspect of your business you're looking at with those real-time capabilities providing some intelligence on top of that with that, um, I'm going to conclude this session. Really happy that I got the opportunity to speak with everyone. Again, my name is Enga. It's great to meet you all.